Hey guys, happy Friday. If you didn't watch my last video, you know I survived. And it's hard making three videos in one day. I had to like change clothes real fast. So I just want to say that if you didn't check out yesterday's video about Bobby Dassey part one, you definitely want to check it out and make sure you subscribe. This way you're up to date on my latest videos. And I just posted one about Zellner's appeal, which honestly is no big deal, but we can totally talk about it live tonight at nine o'clock central time. 10 o'clock Eastern, and then at 10 o'clock Central Time, one hour later, um, I have special guest Brian St. John, who is like the Darley Rowdier, like king. He knows everything there is to know about the case. He's been studying it for years and years and years and years, and he's, he's even spoke to Darley, and he's 100% convinced she's guilty. I am 100% convinced that I don't know if she's guilty or not, and it's going to be a really interesting debate. So... Stay tuned for that. Again, that's tonight at 10 o'clock Central Time, 11 o'clock Eastern. He's going to join me on Google Hangouts. Now, going back to Bobby Part 2, as I stated yesterday, I this is probably the most common question I'm asked is, why do I think Bobby Dassey killed Teresa Halbach for many years now? I've had other people that, you know, I've kind of believed may have been involved, but I know Bobby's guilty. And it all has to do with the bullshit that he lies and lies and lies and lies. And Dietering knew he lied and Dietering like fed him, which is so interesting to me because you have Dietering on one hand feeding info. Then you have Brendan who got fed info and they both got totally different info. And it was like one was for them, one was against them. And, but they both were fed by police doesn't matter which side they were on they were both fed by police so Brian Dassey plays a big part in this and the reason being is because Ken Kratz never put Brian on the stand why didn't he put him on the stand because Brian was going to tell the truth and if Brian went on the stand what would Brian have said Brian would have said that and I quote Bobby said that on October 31st of 2005 he saw Teresa Halbach leave the Avery property. Hmm. So if he left the Avery property, then we know damn well that Avery didn't kill her. Now, this happened. I know Barb posted something about this on Facebook, but let's go way back. On November 6th of 2005, Brian and Brendan got pulled over. And while they were driving, guess whose car? Steven's car. Yeah, they were driving Stevens Pontiac. So, I mean, it's easy to believe that it was probably Steven they were going after and they happened to luck out with Brian and Brendan. So, Brendan had his own separate interview. Bobby, on the other hand, uh, not Bobby, um, Brian had told the cops, hey, you want to go speak to, Bre to Bobby because Bobby's the one who saw Teresa drive away. Funny how nobody mentioned that and nobody went to go speak to Bobby. I don't know why, but they didn't. So, I mean, you would think like that's something they would want to go check out. It's kind of obvious, but no, not them. So now Ken Kratz gets a hold of Bobby and now Bobby becomes the star state, the state star witness. So him testifying now has changed because remember, Bobby did say that Teresa left on the 31st and he saw her drive away. Now he says that he saw, when he left, he saw Teresa walk to Teresa, walk towards Stephen's trailer and that he left before Teresa did. Stephen, now we have a third story. Stephen says that he saw Teresa leave before Bobby. So who the fuck do you believe? I personally, I'm going to believe Brian. Why? Because Brian has no reason to lie about it. And the fact that Brian said this on the 6th when him and Brendan got pulled over he told the cops to go speak to Bobby. The fact that they didn't, to me, raises huge red flags. Um, so as I stated in yesterday's video, Judge Fox signed an order on the 7th at 7.08 p.m., I believe, for Bobby's blood, fingerprints, DNA, everything. And it wasn't until the 9th that Dietering got a hold of Bobby. Now, think about that, though. It was right after everything was found on the Avery property and Stephen was arrested. Then they go check on Bobby. Come on. 
keep in mind, Stephen wasn't arrested till the 9th on a gun charge. The order was signed on the 7th. So please explain to me why they waited 48 hours to get Bobby, almost like 72 hours. Did, was Teresa not important to them anymore? Um, did they, did it not matter about finding Teresa's killer or who was actually suspects? Of course not, because they believed that it was Avery. They were setting Avery up. I don't see how people cannot see this. You know, besides the fact Bushman was called out of retirement, I still say by Kosorik, but he was pulled out of retirement. So why didn't they do anything for Bobby? That to me is like the biggest red flag. Now, let's also remember on the 8th, some of Teresa's bones were found in the Dassey burn barrel. So right there makes all of them suspect. Yet not one of them was tested before the 8th. Um, it really, you could be Inspector Gadget and I think they would know to test them before the 8th, especially if they got an order signed at night. I, most judges, I'm sure, don't work late at night, but Judge Fox did. Um, then Dietering starts talking to Bobby on about skinning deer and how he liked it and, you know, how often he did it and how Stephen was Stephen a hunter and so on and so forth. So this is all conversation you can find in Castle and Department of Justice interview with Bobby. So Bobby says, Dietering had asked like what they do with the heads and um, Bobby had said, you know, we put them in the burn barrel. Dietering starts questioning Bobby about his hunting spot. Now this Listen carefully, because this is really interesting. Bobby says it's two and a half miles from his house. Now, Bobby also stated, or Mike O stated, that they... Now, you have to follow me along here. Mike O said that Bobby and him always go hunting behind Mike O's house every day for God knows how long. Bobby told Dietering that this hunting spot was only 2.5 miles away. Sidita so asked him if he was familiar with who owned the land in Northern Manitowoc. And Bobby says, I have no idea. So Dietering says, well, it's kind of odd because Scott Taddock owned it. And doesn't Scott Taddock, isn't he about to marry your mom? And Bobby mumbled something under his breath. I didn't know Scott Taddock owned this land. Um, I kind of want to know where Scott got all this money from. But hey, it's none of my business. But it would explain why Scott had money to buy this house, too. So maybe he got an inheritance from something. I don't know. But and maybe he killed enough things and got paid off. I have no idea. But yeah. So Scott Taddock owns the land that Bobby supposedly hunted on. But Bobby didn't know that Scott owned the land, even though he's about to marry her father, his his mother. Yeah, okay. Um. So then... This point, Bobby realizes Bobby's pretty much in the clear. Dietering's only job is to make sure that Bobby said the right things, did all the right things, and really helped the police put Stephen away. So at the same time that the police were going to be all nicey nice to Brendan and, you know, you got a friend and we're your father and everything else, they did the exact same thing to Bobby, but in a different way. Now, can I prove that they were scoping Bobby and not Brendan at first. Now nah, I can't prove that. What I can prove though, is that they knew that Bobby was fucked up. They didn't know at this point, but Kratz knew and later on they knew and yet they still went after Brendan, but that's jumping ahead. So let's go to lie number three that Bobby told, cause there were a lot of them, but remember Brian said that Bobby said that he saw Teresa leave. Now, let's not forget Barb said it as well. Barb said to Bobby that she saw Teresa's leave, Teresa leave. Then how come when Dietering spoke to Bobby, the conversation went like this. Stephen seems to think that he wasn't the last person to see Teresa alive. He says you were. Bobby says, no, her vehicle was still there. Dietering says, is that the absolute truth? And Bobby says, it's the absolute truth. So why is Bobby lying to Dietering and why is Dietering feeding him the information? So now go to Brian Dassey. Why would Brian Dassey and Barb? All right. 
So saying Barb is a rhetorical question and let's just stick with Brian. What would Brian possibly have to gain by lying long before anyone was arrested? Because remember, he said this on November 6th. Nobody was arrested yet. And why would Ken Kratz keep Brian off the stand when he was a perfectly viable witness in favor of Stephen? Yeah, you don't need that answer from me because it's not rocket science. So then Dietering, who's a man in his 50s and a longtime cop, I think it was like 30 years on the job, speaking to a 19-year-old says, why would Stephen try to jam you up like that? And how does that make you feel? So, of course, Bobby's going to say it makes me angry. And he says, angry enough to lie, Bobby? So Dietering, now Dietering gets Bobby all hyped up. On November 9th, the day Stephen was arrested, Dietering asked Bobby what time he left. Bobby said around 3 o'clock. He asked if there were any cars in the driveway. Bobby said, yes, a little SUV. So now Dietering, instead of asking like what color it was or anything like that, Bobby, you told me that you were nowhere near the teal-colored SUV. Notice he t gave Bobby the information. And Bobby says, nope, never, never touched it. Now, Bobby said that he went nowhere after hunting, but he went to work. He said that he left for work around 930. Even after he knows Bobby's lying, he goes on to say, and I quote, I've been doing this for 30 years and I can tell when people are honest. I know you're being honest with me. I'm pretty confident you have no part in this. I have never in my entire life heard of a cop doing that to somebody unless they knew they were guilty and they were like mind fucking them. But that's not the scenario in this. So especially to a 19 year old kid. So Dietering then goes on to say that if a cop is lying, they're worthless. Like cops mean nothing if they lie. Their word is everything. So it's super important that the cops go on the stand and tell the truth for the reason of my family. I love, this is all Dietering. I love my family. I need to have a few things. Tell me who says these things to a fucking potential suspect. They don't. Then he goes on to say, you wouldn't lie or do anything illegal, but your family comes first. Keyword, your family comes first. So is this Dietering making it okay for Bobby to lie? Because if I was a 19 year old kid and a cop was telling me that, how do you take that? I take that as, you know what? I'm going to lie for my family and that's okay because it's my family. And then it's okay to lie to protect my family. To me, that speaks volumes. And um, then he goes on to say that Bobby is just like him, just like they did to Brendan. And he's no different than Dietering since they both have families and they both love their families. Then on a whim, he asks Bobby why his footprints might be near Stephen's fire pit or burn barrel. Bobby says, no. Then Bobby says, I've been all over the place but not by the burn barrels of fire print. So Bobby, you've been all over the place except for the two places that they found stuff. Yeah, sorry, uh, not buying that one, Bobby. So a lot of that is all the reasons why. I mean, then I could go on and on about the lies in court and the lies with Scott Taddock and so on and so forth, but I really wanted to cover that basis. That is a lot of the reason, almost all of the reasons why I know Bobby Dassey is guilty and why Dietering knew it. So that's what I have for you in part two. Um, again, if you didn't see part one, you definitely want to go check out part one because it explains what I left off here. Um, I just couldn't do the whole thing yesterday because I was like dying. But make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out my other videos. Again, tonight from 9 to 10, we're going to talk about Zellner's motions because trust me, they are not a big deal. And then from 10 on, in the pajama party, we're going to have Brian St. John, who knows everything about anything about uh, Darley Rowdier's innocence. I am so confused. So if you're confused and you don't know if she's guilty or innocent, I am going to be asking the questions that most people are afraid to ask someone like Brian. So with that said, again, I hope you guys have a fantastic night. I hope I see you in an hour and a half for our live pajama party, and I will change again for a third time. All right, so I'll see you guys tonight and have a wonderful night. Make sure you subscribe, check out my other videos, and I'll see you in 90 minutes. Peace out.